Good evening, everyone. Today, we're going to continue our discussion on <clears throat> data wrangling, making use of the deep layer package. So far, what we have done was to learn how to make use of the filter, filter function, which we use <clears throat> when we would want to <clears throat> just have selected rows based on a particular criterion. So we tried that using just one <clears throat> criterion, for example, we filtered and we created an object where we filtered from the flights data set those flights that are uh, that used AS Alaska Airlines or that uh, that went to the destination of which is this one, this city, or we did some combination, <clears throat> etc. So this time, and then uh, we also we also use the summarize function. This time we're going to use the group by function. But before we do that, let's <clears throat> make sure that your uh, make sure your flights data set is available, just uh, to be sure. Can view flights. <clears throat> Since I asked you a while ago to already make sure that NYC flights twenty three, the package from which this data is coming from. Okay, so let's make sure that <clears throat> this is loaded. So if you view, view this, <clears throat> you'll find this, okay? <clears throat> so this is our data. Okay, so there, <clears throat> this was the data we were using. <clears throat> I'm so sorry, class, sorry. <clears throat> okay, so let's have group by. We also, by the way, use the weather weather data set, right? That's another data set that we use, web view weather. <clears throat> this is also coming from NYC flights. This is another data set, okay? And it has only 20, <clears throat> 26, obs 26,000 observations and 16, <clears throat> and 15 columns, sorry. <clears throat> uh, I apologize class for my, for me having to, having to cut. Okay, so, Take a look at this class. We're creating this object called group month, <clears throat> okay? Group month, and then we're using the weather data set, <clears throat> okay? And then this is our pipe operator, sorry, pipe operator. We use this group by, okay? What are we grouping by? The month. If we take a look at the weather data set, <clears throat> you can, <clears throat> there are some, uh, variables here that we can group, for example, origin, because we know that there are three origins. <clears throat> 2023 cannot be grouped because this is just uh, the whole of 2023. The month can be grouped okay, because there are 12, uh, 12 months. The days also can be grouped. There are uh, here, how many days? <clears throat> okay, let me go down here. So 30. Okay. <clears throat> uh, so <clears throat> those are the things that we can group. The others are quantitative, so it makes no sense to, to group your quantitative variables. Okay, so if we run this, it and print group month. Okay. <clears throat> you can now see that this is a table, table, a special table, data frame, consisting of 26,000 plus rows of data and 15 <clears throat> columns. <clears throat> and then take note of this groups, month into 12. Okay. So, which means that uh, uh, it was. Uh, uh, although you see still the same data, okay? This is still 20, 26,000 rows. Uh, there was no grouping really done, but it just means that R is ready to, <clears throat> let's say you're going to make computations. Let's say you're going to determine the, <clears throat> the average of temperature on a monthly basis, then that can be done <clears throat> because you can, you are grouping now by month. 
So let's let's do that. <clears throat> Take a look at our function here, <coughs> our target code chunk. <clears throat> so we have summary monthly temperature. So we're summarizing the monthly temperature. So we're using the weather function, the weather data, and then group by month, and then <clears throat> and then we summarize. Okay. We're creating the, uh, we're computing for the average and the standard deviation of the variable temp. And this is valid because <clears throat> you're actually using the weather data set. You did not actually create a, a new data. Okay, even if you're grouping by here, this is still the same data, <clears throat> the same weather, the same weather data, still the same number of rows, the same number of columns, nothing was changed. Only that we're now summarizing, okay? We're now creating this object called mean and this object called standard deviation, okay? In this object, sorry, this variable, I mean, the name of the variable is mean and standard deviation in this object called summary monthly temp, okay? So we're getting the average of temp and the standard deviation. And since we know that temp has missing values. We have to impose this na.rm. The missing value has have to be removed. That rm is equal to three. And if we run this now, we can see that what will result is a grouping by month, since we're grouping by month, okay? So very easy for us to group it by month and then get the mean and the, and the standard deviation of temperature. Okay, you can see here that the uh, highest yeah, let me print that here. Summary monthly here, 12 observations. Okay, click this one, so that it will print here there. Okay, and uh, July seems to be the highest, uh, highest temperature, average temperature. Okay, and the most volatile is uh, this one, September 12. So plenty of uh, variation. Okay, <clears throat> the lowest, the coldest is in January. Oh, no, February, 34.5, that's the average. Okay, so we were able to quickly compute for the <clears throat> average temperature and the standard deviation also uh, by, by month. Okay, you can also... So let's let's try. Let's see. Can you do this by this time? Can you group by by origin? Yes, you can do that. Although it might not make that much sense because the the uh, <clears throat> the origins, the airports are very close to each other. Okay, so it might not make much of a difference. But here, if we use origin, then we will be having three. I will be having three observations. One is JFK, the other one is um, La Guardia, the other one is New White. So if I run this, okay, and print it, here you have this output <clears throat> there. <clears throat> and okay, it's quite surprising that JFK seems to be seems to have the highest highest uh, average temperature, and La Guardia. Maybe it's also in the location. Uh, I don't know, but these airports are close <clears throat> to each other. So I'm wondering why there is a big discrepancy between the average temperatures. <clears throat> All right. Okay, so let me uh, let me put back here the uh, control Z. Okay. Control Z. The month. <clears throat> All right. Any questions about this class? The group by. So very helpful, especially if you have a huge data set. Imagine if you were doing this in Excel. Wow. That can well, of course, you can sort. You can also create a pivot table, but uh, still, R is really more robust. It's really more powerful. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, I just discussed here that grouping the weather data set by month, and then applying summarized function yields a data frame that displays the mean 
and the standard deviation. <clears throat> As <clears throat> I discussed a while ago, where the temperature is, is split by the 12 months. Okay. Now, as I said, the function group by does not change the data. Okay. It only changes the metadata <clears throat> or that data <laughs> about the data, especially the grouping structure. Okay. Now you can, let's use another data set. So this uh, data set diamonds come from the uh, package ggplot2. And since we have loaded ggplot2, we can we can also <clears throat> access the diamonds data set. So let's just use the view, <clears throat> view, okay, and then it will uh, give us a print of the diamonds data set. <clears throat> so the variables are carat, <clears throat> cut, color clarity, etc. And the dimension of the <clears throat> diamond here, X, Y, Z. So this seems to be uh, a plot of uh, the length in the X axis, Y axis, and the um, it's a three-dimensional measure plot. And then there are some uh, other data here. There are 53,000 plus observations and 10 columns all in all. Okay, so we're going to make use of this and <clears throat> see. Uh, you can get the structure of diamond, the summary. Okay, let's uh, get the structure first. And you know that this is also a TIBO special data frame. Okay. And you have there the variables <clears throat> under it. Tara, cut. Okay, let's get the summary class. Summary. Okay, from what we can see here, using the summary function. Okay, you have carrot there. <clears throat> and there seems to be no missing values. Okay? No missing values. So everything is <clears throat> complete. So even if we get the, uh, let's say, mean, the average of price, there will be no problem. You don't have to use na.rm is equal to true because price <clears throat> is complete. There, there are no missing values in our data. Okay. All right, so no missing values. So <clears throat> no need to use na.rm. Okay, so here, uh, the dimension, dimension of diamonds, that's uh, 53,940 by 10. So that's the size of our data frame. BIM stands for dimension. <clears throat> Okay, so let's take a look first at the variable cut from diamonds. Uh, we have learned this before. We can create <clears throat> a table <clears throat> and uh, we can see here the different levels of, uh, of cut. We have fair, good, very good, premium and ideal. And then we have the frequency. Uh, in our data, the most is the ideal 21551 observations. Okay, and then if we, <clears throat> If once again, we <clears throat> uh, we use diamonds and then group by cut when we run this, so you can now see that the groups are, <clears throat> so we have information about the <clears throat> data. <clears throat> we have cut five levels, okay? All right, and then this is your dimension. Okay. So that, that's our met metadata class. <clears throat> <clears throat> now the data, of course, has not changed. <clears throat> it still has 53,900, 53,000 plus observations and 10 values. Okay, now <clears throat> let's use now the, uh, the combination once again of group by and summarize. Usually class, group by and summarize are one of the most potent <clears throat> combination as far as uh, the verbs in SQL using the plier. So we, you first group by, and then you get the, the uh, user summarize <clears throat> to compute for a particular, <clears throat> particular um, metric. <clears throat> okay, here, uh, so maybe let's, uh, let's in increase this, let's, let's say max, so we're creating this object, this variable called max, which is the maximum of price. Okay. 
and also let's uh, include the mean to know what's the minimum of the price for each of the <clears throat> for each of the that group okay and then we <clears throat> we print this so we're creating this object average price <clears throat> cut okay of course we have to identify the <clears throat> data set we're using diamonds we use this pipe operator and then we group by the cut so that means uh, any computation here the summarization will be done by cut and we know that the cut is fair good very good ideal etc premium <clears throat> So it will now generate this object, average price cut, and there will be three variables there, average price, maximum, minimum. You can, of course, add more. And it summarizes it. Let's run this. <clears throat> there you go. So you can see here that <clears throat> for the fair, the average price is 4358. So this seems to be the, no, this one, the premium is the most expensive. And you can see here the, the maximum price are not that far apart, but the premium is really the highest, 18,823, right? <clears throat> the minimum in the premium, you can have 326. Okay, for fair, it's 337. Okay, and so you can you can <clears throat> have many uh, summarizations using the summarize function for the different levels of your variable. If there were other variables, then you could have also, if there were other uh, variables that where you can have groupings, then you can also do that. Okay, so let me pause for a while. Any questions, class? Is this clear? Clarifications, questions? No questions? No, okay. sir. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> so moving on, class. So <clears throat> uh, this one, you're just using group by class. Okay, what will happen if I first just run this group by a group by cut and then will that automatically, since we have group cut, Will that automatically generate the average price by per cut? So that's my question here. I I I uh, use group by cut here. If we print this class, you can see that cut has been grouped there. Group. <clears throat> okay. There are still fifty three thousand nine hundred forty observations. So. Uh, you're not changing the data, okay? We're only changing information about the data, the data about the data, because we have grouped the cut. So if we group the cut here, and then if we run this, okay, not including group by, because we're assuming that the data has already been grouped by, so we get the summary, uh, just summarize the, uh, get the average, are you going to generate? No, you're not going to generate by group by. So every time, class, you want to group by your data, you have to incorporate it. <clears throat> okay, you can't just, uh, you can group group uh, by and then create another code chunk and then summarize. That will not work. You have to put it combined, okay? Only by combining group by with another data wrangling, let's say map summarize, will the data be actually transformed. Okay, so if you want the uh, the grouping to be <clears throat> removed, you can just use this diamonds. Okay, group by, and then ungroup. Okay, so if we run this, if we run this, okay, take note. It printed diamonds and diamonds. Uh, you don't have now the grouping for cut, okay? <clears throat> All right. So 
did I <clears throat> did I give the n class? Did I give this portion? Did I share this with you? Did I? Yes or no, please. You can go with the third. Yes, this yeah. one. Review. No, no, deep. No. Deep. Okay, so yeah. Let me just. <clears throat> I'll just uh, <clears throat> so that you can also practice. I I'll, I'll not share the code. I want you to do it on your own. Okay, because that's anyway very easy as a practice. Okay. So this function class n open and close parentheses. This is equivalent to counting. Okay. So if we use this, then you're actually asking R to count. So take a look at this. Take a look at this function. Let me close this. So we're we're uh, kindly create this code chunk class. We're creating that object count by origin. So once again, we pipe flights and then we group it by origin and then we summarize, okay? And the function that we use is not mean, we use mean, right? N, and uh, you don't need to put anything here. N, okay? And then we're creating this object called count. So without running this, what will be created is an object called count by origin. And what will be inside it is just one variable called count. Okay, and then three levels. Ah, so I, I'm sorry, two variables. <clears throat> we have origin and then we have count. Okay, so we have the origin, uh, which is uh, JFK, EWR, and LGA. And then another variable will be the count. Okay, so if you run this class, let's print it also here. So there you go. So origin, EWR, JFK, LGA, alphabet, alphabetize, and then the count. So the number of flights coming from Newark, from JFK, and then from LaGuardia. Okay, so that's uh, this function. N. And then, of course, we use the summarize function. Okay, so pretty easy class. Eh? Okay, I'm sure you don't have any, unless you have questions class, but I don't think you have. That's very easy. All right, so I just explained it. This gives us the number of flights from New York City airports. Okay, now there's, of course, <clears throat> a difference between <laughs> sum and N. Sum is adding, <clears throat> N is just counting. Okay. So I'm sure you know that, you have observed that. All right, now we can also group by more than one variable. Okay, let me share this with you. Control C. I, I wanted you to, <clears throat> this should have been an exercise, but anyway, I, I already have the <clears throat> code here because <clears throat> I was using this in another class. So by origin monthly, <clears throat> we were asked to create this object <clears throat> called by origin monthly. And then we're grouping by origin and then month. Now take note, grouping by can be done uh, via more than one dimension. So here we're grouping by origin <clears throat> and then <clears throat> grouping by month. So we expect here, there's three levels of origin and 12 levels of month. We expect this one to have 36 observations <laughs> because of three times 12, right? So what will happen here is it will first, <clears throat> it will first group by origin <clears throat> and then, then it will create now another variable called month and then another variable, which is the count. So your object here by origin monthly will have three variables. First is origin and then month and then the count, the frequency on a monthly basis, okay? So if we run this, if we run this code, as expected, so I'll just print it. I'll just print by, by origin monthly. By origin, see here, plus 36 observations of three variables. 
So let's zoom like this. All right, so you can see here, origin first, right? EWR. And then each origin grouped by month. Okay. So it's a grouping by origin and grouping by month. And then you have the count. <clears throat> so how many flights in January for EWR? How many flights in JFK in January? Until the last one, LaGuardia, December, 12,432. Okay, so these are object now. <clears throat> So you can see here, we can easily create objects that we want, information that we need <clears throat> for decision-making purposes, okay? Uh, so remember, this is 26,000 plus, oh no, 453,000 plus, where is this coming from? 453,000 plus observations, 435,000 plus observations. And with just a simple code class, we were able to create generate this object with 36, 36, um, let me close this first. What's the name? Okay. Okay. Of course, if we, we can change this, no problem, but the order will change. <clears throat> You'll have month first, okay, so make, make this month, and then <clears throat> make this origin. So we will now have the first column will be month, the second column will be origin. <clears throat> so first will be all one, 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 and then origin, uh, alphabetical EWR, uh, JFK, and then LaGuardia. So if I run this, okay, it will of course overwrite the first one. And it will still be 36 observations, but the order will now be, take a look at this. It's now by month first, and then by origin. So month, 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 origin, month, 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 origin. <clears throat> okay? <clears throat> so very easy. The syntax is very easy class. So we can do a lot of things <clears throat> with the, the group by function and in conjunction with the <clears throat> summarize function. Okay, now take a look at this. Now what will happen to this one? Group by and then origin and then group by and then month and then summarize via the count function. Okay, so incorrect means class, it's different from uh, what we expected. What we expected was three columns, origin, month, and then count. But if we're going to do this, okay, I'm not saying that the code is quote unquote wrong because you're still going to generate something here. But let me ask you to try this first and tell me what's the result. <clears throat> so what's the result with that class? How many observations will you have there? Okay. okay, let's see. How many observations in that 12? Okay, Shari, thank you. <clears throat> First, thank you. You're correct, it's 12. Okay, let's just take a look at the data, at the... Uh, <clears throat> <laughs> the syntax. Thank you, Renzel. Okay, you're correct. It's 12. Uh, so we start with flights. We pipe flights, <clears throat> group it by origin. So Excel, uh, sorry, R is now actually waiting for a function based on the origin. However, we wrote another group by, this time group by month. So what happened here? Okay, so since we have a new group, grouping here, this grouping by here was superseded by this grouping by. So in other words, this, this was, uh, uh, let's say, uh, ignored no? because you have a new <clears throat> function now, group by. Nothing wrong with this group by origin. However, if, you're, if you give another code to group by month, 
then it will it will group by month. It will not group by month and origin because <clears throat> the group by is only singular here. If you have place here group by origin and then month, then that would have a diff been a different story. <clears throat> it would have created this group of origin and then month. <clears throat> but here we're just grouping by origin <clears throat> and then another code group by month. Therefore, what will now prevail will be the grouping by month and then summarize. So since what prevails is the grouping by month, you have 12 months, <clears throat> then you'll have only 12 observations. Okay, so there you go. <clears throat> 12 months. <clears throat> so it ignored the first grouping by. Okay, you can have here three groups, group by first and then group by first and then group by third, the third one. What will prevail is the third one. <clears throat> Okay, so there's a difference between this one and the previous one that we created. Okay, so in fact, this one does not make sense. Why will you group by origin, but not make use of this? Okay, supersede it by the group group by month. So this this function here, this uh, group by here, this verb here, is actually redundant or unnecessary. <clears throat> All right. So I hope that explains it. Okay, so if you want to group by two or more variables, you should include that in the same, in the same uh, verb group by, and uh, separate it by a comma. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So uh, let's have a, a just a, some quick exercises. All right. Control C. So this exercise. Okay. Uh, I, I already gave the answer here, but I just want you to write it. Okay. And maybe if you can, where's the chat here? Chat. Maybe I should I should hide the answer first. Here. <clears throat> but this is actually very easy. What code would be required to get the mean and standard deviation? So we know that this is summary. Okay. For temperature, that's very easy. For each day in 2013, for New York City. Okay. So we're going to use the weather uh, data frame. <clears throat> okay, and let's call the uh, object summary <clears throat> temp by day. Okay, so can you please tell me how many observations we have here? So you're asked to generate an object called summary temp by day, <clears throat> where you summarize the temperature, get the standard deviation, get the mean, okay, by day. So that's very easy. You're just grouping it okay, for each day. So it might not mean anything, but this is just for as an exercise. Because what you're doing is <clears throat> you're getting the average for every for the first day of each month, and then for the second day of each month, for the third day of each month. Assuming there are 30, uh, assuming this is uh what, what month is this? Ah, this is for all, no? Okay, so what do you get, class? <clears throat> I expect you to get 30 or <clears throat> 31, right? Okay, so that's very easy. Okay, so for each day in 2013. So if you say, I'm sorry, uh, uh, this is for each day in 2013. So, <clears throat> so that means class, we're not just we're not looking at every every first, okay? Every first of the month, every second of the month. That's not the problem. Each day means all, all the days in 2013. So therefore, class, the grouping by will take this form. Okay, take a look, class. Group by year, month, and day. So this year, month and day class is, it will be specific, right? So year 2023, month one, day one. So there will be another one, 2023, then month one, and then day two. So you're actually recording each day, <clears throat> each day of the week, each day of the year, right? And then you're getting the mean and the standard deviation. <clears throat> However, okay, how can you get now the mean if it's it's if it's daily? 
Okay. So if you run this class, what happens here? So summary temp by day, summary temp by day, what do we have here? Okay, summary temp by day, 364 observations. <clears throat> okay, so what happens will be, the grouping will be <clears throat> for day one. Okay. So January, all the flights on January 1, <clears throat> then all the flights on January 2, all the flights on January 3, etc., which gives us 364. So that those are the number of days in, in the year. So if I print this, there you go, class. 2023, month one, day one. So this is, now of course, you'll have a, not a number here. Okay, not a number because there are there are uh, uh, NAs in our data set. Okay, but the objective here was more to uh, to come up with the code. Okay, and if we want this to be, uh, if we want R to compute, what do we do, class? What do we do? How do we modify our data okay uh, we did this okay we did na.rn is equal to three now why is it class that it's giving us a not a number what do you think class even if we wrote <clears throat> na.rn is equal to three <clears throat> uh placeholder placeholder uh, what do you mean by placeholder? Na, you can still impute it along the way, I guess, but hindi na siya mag error Okay. Pero linagin natin dito, na.rm. Huh? Okay. So, it would have been imputed already. This is already part of imputation. The imputation here is deleting the uh, NA values. But if you take, take a look at the weather data set, okay, for example, Day one. Okay, if we if we can even create a table. So for day one, all the temperature class, January, January one, it's all not 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 available. So apparently, class, the temperature uh, on the on this particular uh, month on this particular day, okay, that's day one, no values class, all are no values. <clears throat> so because there's no value left class, okay, since take a look at this class, 2023-11, all the temperatures are not a number, okay? So even if we remove this, there's no value class. So what will be generated is, Okay, going back here. Okay, not a number. Because R cannot cannot com cannot compute the mean if there's no number. Right? Plus you got you got it, plus. <clears throat> How can R get the mean of a non-number? So you ignore the uh, NAs. And there are no data points that that uh, have numbers. Okay. So that's what that's what this gives us, even if we use na.rn. So when you use na.rn is equal to true, all the net, uh, all the missing values were <clears throat> were disregarded and nothing was left. Okay? Nothing was left. Okay, so I hope you got it, class. Okay, so this was just meant to get the averages and the standard deviation daily, daily for for the year. So th that will give us 360 plus uh, observations in that data. All right. So questions, class, questions, my question, ba? Error, Rose, okay, kindly, I'll stop share, kindly share your screen, please.
Sorry, naka-disable po yung sharing po. Ay, wait. Ah, sorry. Ah, hindi ko pala na ano, sorry. Hindi ko naka-click share. Go ahead, please. The post room. Okay, class, help me determine what's wrong here. Okay, yung group by mo, may isang, ano, may isang dash nyo sa ilalim. Eh. May isang underscore. Group by and then may underscore yung group by mo. It, uh, it is your... Oh, tanggalin mo yan. Okay, and then looks like okay na yan. Sige, run mo nga. Okay, there. There you go. Okay. So, <clears throat> lesson dito sa ating class, careful with the functions. Kasi very sensitive si R sa function. No? <clears throat> Any extraneous character that's not really part of the uh, function or the verb or the uh, yeah, function will, will generate an error term. Okay. Thank you, Rose. All right. So, let's... Uh, sure. Yes? May question pa ba? Wala na pa. Thank you pa. Okay, thank you. All right, so uh, let's have a few more. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so for the next exercise, <clears throat> what about this class? So what did what was done here? Okay, so let me. Okay, in the interest of time, I'll share. I'll share this one, and the code already because uh, I want us to reach further than this <clears throat> chat. Okay, so let's take a look at this code. Recreate. <clears throat> by monthly origin, but instead of grouping by origin <coughs> and by month. <coughs> I, okay, sorry class, I think we did this already. Okay, we just changed the grouping. Okay, so what will happen here is that there will be a first grouping by month and then by origin. So let's not run that, we already <coughs> did that. Okay, how about this number three? Okay. Uh, we did this already before. No? So how many how many flights left each of the three airports? Uh, we did this before. Okay. We we can use the table function there. <clears throat> or <clears throat> we can use this count class. Okay, so let's do this. So the the uh, objective here is to determine how many flights were <clears throat> left each of the airport. We know that there are <clears throat> three airports okay so here uh, here it adds carrier okay. <clears throat> so here we're grouping origin let's let's remove this first class if we remove the carrier here and then we just count it then what will happen here is that it will just be a count by airport okay so maybe this should be named count Flights, uh, count flights. Uh, yeah, this this can be done. This can be used by airport. So we're just grouping by origin, and then we ask R to count by origin. So if you run this, okay, we have an object where we have the origin, and then we have the uh, the count. Okay, but a while ago, we can also make use of the carrier. So what will happen here is that you have the origin. And then the carrier per origin. Okay, so let's run this. So there you go. So we have first the uh, origin EWR, and then it will give us the. Uh, let me print this. What's this object? Count flights. Yeah. <clears throat> 
29 observations. 29 observations, not, uh, there are, I think, how many, <clears throat> 11 by 11 carrier shata. Let's, let's check less. Let's just check. We can actually count. Hmm? Okay, let's do that. Instead of using the table, okay, let's use, um, okay, let me just close some of this. Go back here. And then let's just count the, count the carrier. So group by carrier, okay. And then count. So this one will give us 14, <clears throat> 14 by two. So there are 14 carriers, okay. 14 by two, <clears throat> 14 carriers and the number of flights that uh, that uh, that were how should I say it? that use this okay so you have this the frequency here and then if I put here origin okay fourteen and then run this we have. <clears throat> only 29 uh, it's not 14 times three because uh, some of the some of the origin some of the airports do not service some of the airlines so that's why you only have 29 here okay so you have now a breakdown of the different of the different airports and what carriers what uh, airlines uh, flew from there and also the count Okay, so uh, I'm sorry, Tosh, if I'm going uh, quickly over this because I know that this is something that's uh, really not, <clears throat> it's really uh, easy to explain and I'm sure, I'm sure you're able to, to follow unless you have any clarifications okay, so that we can move on to the other, uh, other uh, verbs, other SQL verbs, SQL functions. Any questions about this class? So once again, this is combining group by and then summary. Okay, Sir, can you go again? I'll just check the code. Thank you. For this one? This one? Yes, sir. Thank okay. you. All right. And if you want to include other metrics, <clears throat> You can put it under summarize, just like we did a while ago. Summarize the uh, average, the standard deviation, the minimum, the maximum, etc. Anything that can be measured class, you can put it uh, in the summarize, summarize function. Okay, so <clears throat> let's see if we. If we answer. Need. Thank you. All right. Okay, so this just asks the question class what's the difference between filter? and group by followed by a summarize. Well, filter class, you just remove those rows that you don't uh, need based on a certain parameter. Okay, for example, you're defining the uh, filter to be uh, those des those uh, that, that have a destination of PDX, then it will remove, it will filter all those rows that whose destination is not PDX. On the other hand, grouping, and then summarizing yields into a summary, into a value, okay? okay? It reports a new value, whether it's mean, standard deviation, et cetera. So that it's a world of difference, okay? Now, before we go to, the next one is mutate, but before we go to mutate, let's uh, just already introduce here the, uh, the select function because this is also easy, select. Okay, so what's select? Select is just choosing the choosing the variable. Okay, so for example, uh, we let's go here. Let's go to uh, once again flights, and let's just from the names here. Let me just run this. Names, flight. 
I'm sorry, uh, flights, I'm sorry, flights. <clears throat> names, names, flights. Okay, so these are the variables in flights. And if, let's say, let's create another object. Uh, I'll just call it object one, okay? Alt minus. And then I'm going to use first flights, okay? And then control shift N for my pipe operator, shift enter. And then I'm going to select. Select what? <clears throat> I'm going to select class, uh, let's see, C. C, open parentheses, and then let's say origin, comma, let's see, uh, flight, comma, destination, comma, period. There. <clears throat> right, then I close select. Okay, what's happening here, class? And then let's print object one. Let's just print the head, head of object one. Okay. So I'm creating this object, object one. We're using flights first and then select. So this is the first time we're okay. using select. Okay. Select origin, flight, destination, carrier. And then let's print the first six objects of observations ob object one. Let's run this. So now our object one will have one, two, three, four, four variables, origin, flight, destination, carriers. Okay. So that's it, that's select class. You're also subsetting, but what you're doing here is that you're removing the variables that you do not need, the columns that you do not need. So it will still be, Four, three, five thousand observations, same number of rows. However, the variables are now cut into four. Okay. okay. So the difference between uh, select and filter is that in filter, you're reducing the number of observations, the number of rows, and still maintain the same, same columns. On the other hand, for select, you're maintaining the same number of rows, and then uh, your your quote unquote removing or filtering your columns, and of course you can combine them, plus. So for example, this one. Okay. So here we're selecting. Okay, and then. We can pipe this. Okay, so for example, let me remove this. <clears throat> and then control shift M. Okay. So we now have this object called object object obs one containing uh this object, this data frame with four with four variables. And then we can, so we have carrier there, okay? Uh, then we can have, uh, we can filter this. Okay? Filter. Filter. So we'll just choose, okay, uh, the, those, okay, let's see. Carrier, let's use the destination. Filter what destination, and then if you recall, okay, we can use the percentage in percentage. This means that destination in this particular in this particular vector. Destination in so what what are this? Uh, let's do uh, <clears throat> PDX. Okay, the ones that we remember. PDX and then let's do AS. And then let's do also uh, BTV. And then let's also do shuttle. These other things that I remembered. Um, shuttle. Okay. 
and then you can add more. Let's just, just use that class. All right, so here we're combining class, okay? We're combining. We first select, okay? So we will now be down to these four variables and then we filter, okay? So if we run this class, our object one will now have, okay? Yeah. Object one, it will now have 10,627 observations. So we not only uh, deleted uh, the columns that we did not need, we also pro we also filtered filtered it to conform to a certain a certain uh, uh, let's see a certain uh, parameter which is the destination. Okay. And then from here, we can move on. Since we, we now have this object, this is now the object, we can, what, what else we can do? We can, okay, uh, control shift M. We can once again, <clears throat> group by. Group by. Okay, what can we uh, group it by? We can group it by the destination. Okay, so remember we have four destinations here. We can group by destinations and then control shift M, okay? Shift enter, then summarize. So take note, what was, what's the object that we have now? Up to this point, we have this object, uh, object one here. This is our object. And then we're asking R to group it by the destination and then compute. What can be computed? Oh, okay. Uh, <clears throat> maybe let's add here. What can we, for the flights, let's, let's, uh, let's add departure delay depth delay, okay, so that we have a quantitative uh, value here. Okay, because here class, we cannot, we cannot, we cannot get the average of flight. It makes no sense because, uh, what's this flight? It's the flight number class. Oh, wait. The flight object is, yeah, this is the flight number. So this does not mean that, or is it the minutes? Uh, wait, I, I'm not. I'm not sure. So flight is it the number of minutes? Okay. Anyway, class. Uh, let's just add. Let's just add departure delay. Okay. So I'll add here to our object here, comma depth underscore delay. All right. So you can see here, class, that this is really powerful. Imagine if if you were not using here, if you were not using the pipe operator, this would have taken long. This would have been very difficult to to process. Okay. So group by and then let's summarize. Okay. Summarize. Let's call it. <clears throat> let's call it. Uh, uh, total, okay. Total is equal to sum sum of your sum of depth delay, okay. Comma. You also get the average. Average is equal to mean of depth underscore delay. And comma. Let's also compute for the standard deviation. SP dev. Call it SP dev is equal to SD depth underscore delay. All right. Okay, so take a look at this class. What have we done? From the flights data set, we selected these four variables or five variables. Okay. And then 
we filtered destination percentage in percentage is destination in this vector pdx as btv shuttle so this will be understood destination is understood because we're still in the we're still in the flights object okay uh we're, we're in this object and this object origin flight destination carrier it has destination in it so it will understand this filter destination to include pdx as btv shuttle and then let's group it by destination and then compute for the compute for the total the sum the mean and the standard deviation okay could you kindly do that class please were you able to generate this object called object one It should have there. What should what should you find there? When you summarize class, you'll have what are we summarizing? The departure delay, right? And we are summarizing by destination. So what you'll have is destination and then total average and then okay NA okay you know nothing huh? like NA din sa inyo class let's see baka may error tayo sa simple meron sa akin eh okay ah nag NA class no kasi okay ah uh, departure delay let's check first departure delay Okay, check ko lang class, ha? Uh, summary natin. Summary si flights. And then kunin lang natin si departure delay. Hmm, sorry. Uh, may NA siya class, no? May NA siya. Kaya nag nag na no so what do we do with this kailangan natin isama dito yung okay isasama natin sa summarize class yung where are we here we have to include here yung na.rm no? kasi may mga na yung ano natin eh yung depth delay so okay sum nito pero na and a dot rm is equal to true. Pwede nti lang. So this one also, comma, and a dot rm is equal to true. And then this one, and a dot rm is equal to duplicate. Okay? So this will be re replaced class because r will now ignore the missing values okay error din si rose error din uh baka yun nga no yung yung mga missing values iran ko ulit to okay there you go so yung departure delay total number of minutes ito sa btv pdx shuttle okay object one asa na siya Ilan ba yung ano natin? Ay, mali class, no? Sorry, ah, hindi destination to, eh, no? I stand corrected. This is not destination. This is carrier. Kaya hindi nag-appear class si carrier kasi walang ano, walang AS na ano, na destination. Okay, so let me replace that with uh, tinako na lang, pili na lang isang destination dito. So, yan, Miami na lang, MIA. Okay, apologies class, this is a carrier class, it's not a destination. Kaya, nung MIA na lang, there. Miami, okay. So, let me rerun this. So, dapat, 
Yan, apat yan. BTV, Miami. So, pinakamalaking delay kay Miami. No? Okay? And then, standard deviation. Ang laki ng standard deviation. Okay, pause for a while, class. How did you get it? Uh, so, here we have experience putting this putting these functions all together. And without the pipe operator, kasi, nako, grabe. I've tried that in the past. Ang hirap nito, no? Kasi ang daming parameters, eh, iisa-isihin mo yan. You'll, you'll have to go through it one by one. So, one one code first for for uh, selecting it. And then another code for filtering. Tapos, another code for grouping. And then another code for summarizing. Okay? Th this can... This can have several rows and rows and rows of 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 uh, uh, of code codes. Okay, but because of this class, because of the pipe operator, kaya napaka napaka importante ng pipe operator. Very important and very very convenient to use. Okay, take a look at this. From the flights data set with 435 plus observations, we were create able to create an object with with uh, first with four parameters and then uh, we uh, filtered it to have only four four destinations and then we created an object uh, uh, by grouping the destination and then computing the total num total num minutes of delayed and the average of the delay and then the uh, standard deviation of the uh, departure delay. And there you go. You have this object there. Okay. And try to do it, class, without the uh, without the uh, the select, the filter. Okay. Don't bother, class, because <laughs> it's really very difficult. No? So uh, before I would do this without the deep plier, Marami akong mali, no? Kasi ang hirap talaga. Alright. Did you get it, class? Did you get it? So feedback, please, if you got it. Feedback, please, class. Na, na ano ba? Na, na correct yung errors nyo? Or do we need to look at them? Uh, anybody who still is having an error term, class? Yung mga NA kanina class, it was because there are, we checked, diba? We checked the table. Okay. We saw that there are NA values in departure delay. So if there are NA values there, then you'll have NA when you summarize it. Okay, okay na? Okay na? Good. Thank you. How about the uh, others? Okay na ba? Pa confirm nga, please, class. Thank you. Okay. All right. Good. Thank you so much, class. I hope the others were able to follow also. Okay. So a, a few more things about. Uh, okay. So I think that's that will be all for. Okay. Group by and then, uh, then combining all these things. No. So let's now go to mutate. Mutate is also very simple. Okay. Mutate is computing something. Okay. So. Let's now, let me share this with you. We're going to create the, uh, we're going to create the, we're going to, sorry, use the weather data set. Okay, mutate, control C. And then, shut. So quick review class, we have finished uh, filter, Select and then uh, summarize and then group by okay those four and then here mutate. So select is removing variables. Mutate is creating a variable. Okay, so that's the difference. So let's let's go to the weather data set. Okay, and the the temperature there is in terms of. Uh, centigrade uh, sorry the temperature there is in terms of fahrenheit this is us us uh, data so they usually use fahrenheit so what we're going to do is we're going to convert it into centigrade we're going to create an object a variable 
maybe let's call it C or whatever, send P, whatever. Uh, and it will be uh, it will be generated by um, coming up with a mathematical formula involving the temperature. And the formula to convert your Fahrenheit into, into centigrade is just the Fahrenheit or the temperature in this case, minus 32 divided by 1.8. So quite a simple formula, all right? So what we're going to do now is we're going to create a new column and let's call it temp in C, okay? So we're, we're going to overwrite the old weather data set by inserting a new column temp in C. Okay, so here I'm using the old symbol for weather. So let's just replace it by the new one, control shift M. So I'm creating an object called weather one, okay? So to preserve the weather object. So we start with weather and then we mutate class here, mutate. So just like summarize, we give uh, the first one here is the name of the column, okay? And then this will now be our formula. Okay, so our formula is equal to temp minus 32. So this would be recognized, this temp here, because the uh, uh, we're using the weather data set, right? So weather, if you take a look at weather, there is the temp here. There's this temp here, okay? So temp minus 32, and then divided by 1.8, okay? And then we close the mutate here. So what will happen here is that uh, this object will be created weather one, and it will have a more, it will have more rows than, more columns than weather. Okay, weather has, weather has uh, 15 columns. Weather one will have 16 columns because we created this uh, new variable temp in C. So let's run this. Okay, let's take a look at weather one here. All right. So uh, here we can't avoid this because this we're converting the temperature from Fahrenheit to centigrade. And there are some here that are <clears throat> some here that uh, that do not have values. Okay, so what will happen is that only those with values, let's go down here, okay? So what happened? Um, okay, so difficult to find. Okay, so let's, uh, let's get the summary, summary of, <clears throat> We now have this object weather, right? Weather one, summary of uh, temp in C. There you go. Okay, let's see the summary of this. Control enter. Okay, so it has values class. It, it's not, it's only difficult to see. It has a minimum value of this one, first quartile, and then, but there are NAs there. Okay, NAs are those where the temperature is also NA. Uh, the temperature in Fahrenheit. Okay. Just a minute, plus. Okay. All right. So you got it, class? The weather one. Okay. There's weather one, weather one, it now has a new object, a new variable, and the variable is this one, temp in C. And there are NA values because uh, the formula is temperature, this one, minus 32, then divided by 1.8. But we saw here, class, when we did the summary for weather one, temp in C, there are values there. Okay, we have the minimum value, we have the maximum value, but we also have NAs. Since the weather data set has 25536 NAs, this one also weather one has 25536 NAs. Okay, so just to confirm that summary, uh, the object is weather dollar temp. Okay, so 25536 NAs. Of course, our mutated value 
we'll also have 25, 5, 3, 6, and 8. Okay, so that's a, that's mutate class. We're creating a new variable. Create a new variable, okay? And then we can base it on uh, a particular variable here. In this case, we use the temp data set. Okay, so, okay. <clears throat> uh, now, let's see this. What did I do here? Okay, so this is just the equivalent uh, equivalent way of doing this. Okay, so we create first a new object, weather two. So this is just uh, a replication, duplication of weather here, and then, so if you view this, it will be the same as weather, and then here I'm adding. I'm adding, plus, uh, it should be temp in C. I'm adding a new variable, okay? weather two and then dollar temp in C. So this means that I'm adding this new variable and this one has the formula weather dollar temp minus 32 divided by 1.8. Okay, so it's a, it will be the same thing, all right? But of course, this is uh, uh, longer. This is actually shorter because we're just piping through, piping through it. All right. Okay, so this just, uh, it's what we did here, okay? Okay, then this one, about this one. Okay, this one compute the monthly average. Let me just share this with you. Okay, this is actually easy. So those that are very easy, which I know you'll be able to control C follow very easily. I'll just share with you the code. Okay, just change class the, just change the uh, pipe operator. All right. So where, where are we now? <clears throat> Here. So maybe let's just finish this so that next meeting will just be, uh, we'll just have the, uh, I don't think we'll be able to do the joins because that's that's quite long class. Okay. So here compute the monthly average temperatures in both Fahrenheit and centigrade using the group by and summarize. Okay, so we know this class. Summary monthly temperature. So control shift N. The one with the temp in C is weather one. So we will use that object. And then group by month. I control uh, shift N. So we're grouping it by month, month one up to 12. And then we're summarizing. So let's call a mean temperature in Fahrenheit, which is equal to mean temp, and then na.rm is equal to true to remove the na values. And then mean temp in centigrade, and then it's mean, we're getting the mean of, of this variable temp in C, and then na.rm is equal to true. Okay, so what will be generated here is a column of months, and then a column of mean temp in F, and then a column in mean temp in C, okay? So it's an object called summary monthly temperature, three columns, okay? And then, uh, of course, 12 rows. That's what we expect without even running this, we know class. And if you run this, there you go, okay? So three variables, first is the month, mean temperature in Fahrenheit, and then mean temperature in centigrade. Okay, I hope this made sense, class. So it's really practicing more on what we have, have we have been learning so far. Okay, so this one we just in, included uh, included uh, the mutate. Actually, you can combine this class eh? here. Once you have created the weather one, 
whether one object, then we you can now include actually this one. This one, the group, and then the summarize. Why? Because it we already have weather one, right? We have weather one, and then we can append from there the group by and then the summarize. So that's really one thing very important or very powerful with piping. Okay, once you're able to create an object, you can continue adding on, adding on to it, continue working on the uh, manipulating that data. Just make sure that you know what object was created by the most recent piping. Okay. Okay, this one we included uh, standard deviation, so just include it in the summarize. Okay. Anyway, I'll just share this with you. Control C. I'll not run that anymore because uh, I'm just just replace this class with the latest. Control Shift N, and this one also. Okay, so uh, clear so far, class. I hope it's clear so far. I think. Uh, uh, okay, this one. Mutate class, mutate. So let's do this. Let me share again this uh, notes here. Another example. Back to the flights data set. And then we're going to mutate, which means that we're going to create a, a new variable, okay. So just yeah, control C. Chat. Oh, sorry, this is too long. So, so part by part na lang, no? <clears throat> so another example, <clears throat> so this is also mutate. Just up to here, control some the notes. Good. All right. So, uh, anyway, class, we still have uh, some more minutes. Let's just finish this uh, this mutate thing so that next meeting, uh, it will be only it will be only joins, okay? Which is really quite difficult because there are different types of joins. And then we're going to use several uh, data sets. So you can have, let's say, five data sets. And then you're going to combine. You're going to create a new data set coming from these different five data sets. So this will require more discussion. Okay. So for this one, we're just mutating. Um, control shift M. So we're creating this object called flights one using the flights. Okay. And then mutate will now generate a new variable called gain, okay? Gain, which is equal to the difference between the, the minutes uh, it was delayed and the minutes, uh, the arrival delay also. So if, if it was delayed by, the delay will be negative. Okay? If it was delayed by 10 minutes, I'm sorry, the delay is positive. No? If it was delayed by 10 minutes and the arrival delay was only five minutes or, or three minutes, then there was a gain in seven minutes, okay? Which means that if the flight got delayed, uh, it, de it departed delayed by 10 minutes, but it arrived at the destination by only, uh, it was delayed by only three minutes. Therefore, there was a gain of seven minutes. So let's run this, okay? And then let's view flights one here. You notice that there are now 20 variables. The flights data has only 19. So it will be placed here plus the gain. Here. So that's mutate for you. Creating a new variable. Uh, you can use mathematical functions, combining or working or uh, doing some operations uh, in a particular variable or combining them or using several variables to get to generate your new variable okay so it's uh, really easy okay uh, SV.
Okay, so where's my sequel then? Okay, so I think we have some more, a, a little more class, and then we'll call it a day. So let's just finish this. Let's finish this. Uh, okay, this is another one. Okay, I think I up to this one. So just for practice, let's look at the summary statistics of the gain variable. So let's do that class. So it's in in what object is it? It is flights, right? Summary of flights, flights one, okay, and then dollar gain. Okay. So we created this object, flights one. And inside that flights one is the variable gain. So let's summarize that. Okay, so the first quartile is one, the median, the second quartile is 11, or the median, average nine, third quartile is 20, the maximum 101, which means that there, uh, there was a delay of more than 101, okay? And it was able to recover plus. It was the gain here is that it's, if it's positive, then it means it was a, able to gain ground. Okay, and there are twelve thousand five hundred thirty-four MAs. All right. So what are we asked here, class? Uh, we're asked here to. Okay. So this one. Okay, let me share this. Wait. What did I share last time? Where are we here, right? So for practice, let's look at the summary statistics of the gain variable. Okay, so we have the computation for minimum, quartile one, quartile two, quartile three, et cetera. And how many missing values? Then let's, okay, let's call the object gain summary. Okay, so this is what we do here. All right, so this is now computing class, okay? Summarize, let's uh, do this, control, shift M. So we're creating, we're creating this object, gain summary. We're using flights one object, and then we're going to summarize it. So how do we summarize? We get the minimum of gain, okay? Make sure we indicate here ma.rm. We we get the quartile one, which is the function quantile, what what variable gain, and then quantile what 0.25, that's 25th percent percentile. That's quartile one. And then median, that's 0.5. Okay, quantile also. Uh third quartile is quantile also, and then 0.75. And then the maximum is just the max, the minimum is just the mean. Standard deviation is standard deviation. And then we're asked to include the missing value here. Missing is equal to the sum. The sum of is that NA of gain. Okay, so take a look at how this was created. We're summing, okay, is that NA of the gain punk of the gain variable. Okay, so this would be minimum one value, one value, one value, one value, one value. Okay, so we're now creating this object called gain summary, it will only have one row, and then there will be uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight columns. Okay. Did I share this with you, class? Did I share this code with you? This one? Yes or no? No, please? sir. Ah, no, no, sorry. Sir. Yeah, sorry. I thought I shared this with you. Okay. In the interest of time, class. Uh, because I'm sure you'll be able to do this also. Uh, maybe what uh, a new computation you, you learned here is that the quantile function will give us the quartile. Okay? Control C, and then let me check Control D. So what happens to this code class? What happens here? Gain summary. Let's run this. <clears throat> okay. And then take a look there, yes. Gain summary, you're summarizing the minimum, first quartile, second quartile, third quartile, maximum, the average standard deviation and the meaning. And let's compare that with this one class. 
let's compare that with uh, the one here, which is, uh, uh, that's uh, flights one, flights one, and then summary, let's summarize. I think I run this a while ago. No? Anyway, summary, flights uh, one, dollar gain. G, G, there. All right. So we have here minimum, same, right? Minimum, first quartile, one, one. Median, 11, 11. Third quartile is, which third quartile? Quartile three is 20, 20. Maximum is 101, okay? Average is 9.354, okay? Standard deviation is, uh, you don't have the standard deviation here. We computed the standard deviation and the missing is 12.534, okay? Pretty accurate class. And we were able to compute this using, okay, using the summarized function. Let me just close this. So many open objects here. All right. So did you get it, class? You should you should get get it because uh, we were using the same code. Okay, packet chat, please, if you were able to get it. Okay. We already did this. Okay. This is done. This one also. Okay. okay we're almost done, class. Let me just finish this. Uh, so that we don't have any other item here pending. Okay. So I think this is just a replication. Okay. Uh, if we were to group this by month class, control shift N. So let's take a look at this first. Control N. So one good thing really with uh, with uh, deep layer, with the use of group, summarize. So we see here, same thing, gain summary, uh, but we're now creating a new object one. Also from flights one, uh, this is the object where we have the gain. Okay, what's added here is that we're grouping by month. Okay. So you'll have now group by month. So you'll have a column on month. So that will be uh, 12, 12 rows, one up to 12. And then you also have the computation on a per month basis of minimum, quartile one, etc. Okay, so you can. You just copy the code above and then you just add here. Add, just add another line here, group by month. Okay, so do that, please. And then maybe change the name, maybe make it gain summary one. Okay, and then change this one also gain summary one. Okay, so if you run this class, it's the same thing. Okay, only that we are adding the layer of uh, another variable with 12 observations. So take a look at this class. There you go. So this is on a monthly basis. Okay. So quite powerful class. So as I said, if we were do th doing this without the pipe function, mm, it, it, it's even very difficult to fathom. Uh, trust me, class, I did this before. <laughs> when the player was not really, I was not yet uh, an in thing, wala pa yung deep layer, no? Really very difficult. Okay, good, good. So I think I have one one or two more here before we call it a night. Okay, so as I said here, this code would take some time to type out in practice, okay? So of course, we, we use the uh, summary function and there are other functions also that can also do this. For example, let's just, uh, Let's just use the scheme function, okay? okay? And then this is the code here. 
a lot. So let me just fix this a bit first. Oh, sorry. Control Z. And then I'll replace this with. So you may please just write this, please. Oops, what happened here? Control Z. I'm oh, sorry. Let me just delete this. Control Shift M. Okay. Okay. So this is a lot simpler to Take a look at this. Control Shift M. Shift M. All right. So here I'm creating this object gain summary two. So I'm using again the flights one object. Pipe it by selecting. So I'm just going to select gain. Okay. So it this will be uh, of course this will be when you say select class. Remember you're now creating uh, a new object that only has that has gain as the only column, and then we're asking it to be skimmed. Okay, so if you run this class, run this. Okay, what happened here? Okay, wala pa yung skim kasi plus kailangan pinasok muna natin yung skim R package. Okay, so hindi niya nakuha yung skim. Sorry about that. I forgot to tell you to. Okay, dito na lang class sa packages. Install. Okay. I have I have it here, but I most probably don't have it. So paki ano na lang class install or magpakman kayo. So scheme R scheme R I have it. Oops, yeah. Just click this one. So this is for flexible summaries of data. All right. So if you don't have it, install it please, or you use the pload function. Okay. So now that I have in I have loaded scheme R. It will now understand. It will now understand uh, what uh, what it it's. Uh, this is already joins now. So it's in a last not in class. So not I Okay. Okay. Here. Okay. So if I run this scheme, all right. So what happened here? Okay, my warning, Shano. And let me take a look at gain summary. One observation of 12 variables. Is there? Is there? Yes. Okay, so what did it do here, class? And dito yung mga statistic, no? Uh, numeric dot P dot O, this is your minimum. Numeric dot P25, this is your first quartile, second quartile, third quartile, and then this is your maximum. Okay, may mga missing values dito. Okay, the variable is gain. Okay, so this is what the, the scheme function will generate. Okay, meron pa nga dito, ano, no? Meron pang histogram ng... ng uh, ng data natin. This is the histogram. So yung gain natin, generate yung histogram nito. So this is what the scheme function generates. <clears throat> okay? So it's the same output, but uh, we did it uh, differently. Okay, we use the scheme function from the scheme R package. Okay, so here... These are just uh, these are just class uh, these are just uh, exercises, okay. So I'll just share this code with you and try to see what this does. Control C. Okay, it's easy to understand anyway. Control D. Okay, so what's happening here? We're creating this flights to object using flights object. So we're mutating class. So mutating. Here we're creating three new variables. Gain, which is the same one that we did a while ago, and then Rs. So we're creating this object, uh, this variable Rs, which is we are converting airtime into divide by 60. So airtime is in minutes. So we would like to convert it into Rs. So divide by 60. And then the gain per R is simply gain divided by Rs. 
Okay, so you can see here three variables will be created gain and then Rs and then gain per R. The gain per R is simply dividing your gain and your Rs. Okay, of course, this can be created because plus you first create the gain and then you create the Rs and then you create the gain per R. Okay, so let's run this and then take a look at flights too. So we now have here at the end the mutated variables. You have the gain here, you have the Rs here, okay? Which just converted your, your R, right? 20, uh, 20 divided by, what was it? Airtime pala, airtime divided by 60, okay? And then the gain is simply negative two divided by six point, that's the gain per R. Okay, so we can we can mutate not only one variable but several variables. Okay, so that's another power of your mutate function. Okay, and then lastly, class arrange. This is very easy. Arrange and sort. Okay, and nothing, nothing really, uh, nothing so critical with this. Let me see, control C and then control D. Right there, good. All right, arrange is simply just sorting. Okay, so that's number five. <clears throat> Mutate and then arrange and sort. Commonly perform uh, the arrange function. So, so let's just quickly go to that. We're creating this object. Uh, frequency of the destination from flights we group by destination and then we summarize okay we count them okay and then we create this so it will just create a a count of all your destinations so if you run this you'll have two variables for this object first is the destination and then you have the count Okay, so there are 118 different destinations. And then these are the number, frequency of the, of the destination, okay? And then from their class, we can arrange the data. So how do we arrange the data? So very easy, frequency, destination, and then just arrange it. Okay, or you can you can actually pipe it here. Summarize, control shift N. Okay, and then use the function this one class. This one arrange. This one arrange. What do we arrange class? What do we arrange? Okay, where are we here? Okay, oops. Okay, this is actually very easy to control the, okay. Kasi di ba, class, we already created this variable num flights, okay. So we this variable is existing when we summarized it, and then we arrange num flights. Okay, a while ago, okay, let me first, uh, let me first, class, comment this out, and then remove this first, remove this pipe operator. I should have... Uh, Okay, I'm commenting this out. So how was this arranged class? This was arranged, the default was alphabetical. Okay? A BQ, A C Q, that's the default. If I want this arranged class by number of flights, okay, then it should be arranged now by number of flights. And if we run this class, okay, so it's now arranged from lowest to highest. Okay, so it's now arranged not by destination, but by number of flights. And of course, you can do otherwise class here. If you want it to be 
from highest to lowest, you just put here descending. Okay. So if I put here desk descending, we above arrange a okay, descending. Now close this one. Okay. Open parentheses, descending. Okay. Then the arrangement will now be from highest to lowest. There. Boston, and then I don't know, Orlando maybe. All right, there. So very easy class. You sort, arrange. Okay, so, all right. So that's it, class. Let me stop recording now. Okay, very good. We were able to finish what we set out.